Welcome, Awakening Hearts. I'm Denny Van, your host. I'm so excited to be talking with Carol May Wittick today. Welcome, darling. How are you? I'm really well, Denny. Nice, nice to be on, on the show with you. Thank you for connecting us. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. So Carol works with helping people discover spirituality and apply it in a real world sense. Excellent, darling. So tell us a little bit about that. What do you do? So I work as a creativity and spiritual life coach, and I'm all about people just discovering that greater part of themselves, but it not being uh, as woo woo or as dogmatic as people might have in terms of an idea of what spirituality is for them. And then just showing them how, to be honest, you've been living a spiritual life already. You've just not been paying that much attention to it and just kind of show how it's there already. And it's like an extra layer of awareness and it's like an extra oomph to your life basically if you choose to acknowledge and work with it and accept it into your life as well you know and usually um and mainly I work with women when they're coming to me um a lot of the time they've made a lot of achievements in their life like worldly achievements you know so everything looks all right from the outside but then there's just this thing of like is there a bit more? Can I go deeper, you know, and, and can I make a change? And also having this kind of shift in, in age where they're around about my age as well, kind of moving into 50s and 60s and really wanting to make sure that they leave some sort of real legacy behind and actually worthy of all the things that they may have experienced. Awesome. You work with women my age. I just turned 57. Oh, OK, great. I just turned 50 last year. So at the end of last year. Yeah. Awesome. So enjoy 50 before you become 51. Yeah, because it goes by so fast, right? So uh, tell us about real life misconceptions about spirituality. What type of misconceptions do you come across people having about spirituality? Hmm. I think there's an idea that it might it, that it has uh, that thing about where it's it's got like kind of parallels with religion that it has to be dogmatic that there is some sort of practice that is a prescribed practice that you have to do at specific points in time and while that is true if you choose to to follow a methodology of sorts it doesn't make you any more or less spiritual. To be honest, it's an easy way to kind of go down the prescribed route of practicing things at certain times of the day. And you can hit all the markers and yet really not be getting to the point of spirituality and, and really understanding deep spirituality for yourself. So, um, you know, I've, I've been part of groups where we get up early in the morning and we're doing all of the things, but then it's very easy to kind of use these practices to not deal with anything you know you'll you'll you kind of check the mark or you you've done a deep meditation or a breath work or a practice that kind of elevates you out of the pain where you are energetically at that moment but you're and you're able to kind of maintain so you're you're kind of using like a um uh, energetic drug in the same way that people might use medication there are ways of using um, energetic uh, medications and meditations to kind of take you out of your pain but there comes a point where we would really need to just face it and see what's going on there and see what we can make of it for ourselves for the better there's always a, a, a golden nugget in every experience that we have Absolutely. Meditation is medication. And I loved what you said about hitting the markers. It's like, okay, I'm taking this program and I'm doing all the things, but doing all the things is not getting you the results. Why is that? Maybe because you're not really looking at why the thing's there. A lot of the time, it's you, you notice that you've got this discomfort, this pain, this recurring situation. You keep meeting the same person. You keep hitting the same roadblock. Whatever it is that life keeps showing you that is a reflection of an area that you need to deal with. And if you're not deeply asking the questions, then you're not going to ever get the answers. So, you know, if you keep kind of bucking in this bucking up against the same problem and you know a way to get over the problem, but not really look at the symptom of the problem, then then you'll just you can spend years, decades doing that. Many people do. 
um, to get deeper is to go, why is this happening? And really look and be radically honest with yourself and, and face all of the, 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 the reasons that come up. And it's not about blame. It's just about realization, you know, taking the power back. Like if you are creating a situation, you can uncreate it. So um, being aware that everything that happens in your life is a reflection of where you are is actually an empowering thought as opposed to a, a blame and something to take on as a, as a stick to beat yourself with. Absolutely. It is not about blame for sure. And the image I got, you know, of doing all the things, it's like a dog chasing his tail. You know, you're just spinning and you're not centering and grounding and having the experience. You're going straight for the result, what you think the result is, right? So um, I'm reading your bio and it says you are a creativity and spiritual life coach podcaster and musician. I'm a musician too, darling. So tell me about your musician. Uh, So my musicianship just was always part of always part of my life there's like a picture that I have on my website actually of uh, me being four years old and just trying to like you know standing like a couple of feet high trying to hit the keys but um, as I grew uh, older and started to learn instruments and like apply what I was writing to create songs um I really realized that like there was a a deeper connection where this creativity was coming from, that it was coming from somewhere that was other than the world. So that's how I I really kind of like fell into a connection with something like bigger than myself that was guiding me, that was that was allowing me to write songs, that was giving me ideas and and kind of giving me the feeling and the, you know, when I'd find the words that would really complete a lyric that I'd been battling with there'd be almost, you know, that feeling of like goosebumps or, you know, that feeling where you know that you've you've got it right for yourself. Um, and then I just, when I really discovered that it was possible to make music and potentially make money, um, you know, and make it a lifestyle, then that was, um, that was something that I worked in for um, years, actually, you know, and, and maybe at the time, especially when I was going through that, I never hit the heights that I thought I should have or wanted to attain what I didn't realize in all of that I was still working as a musician I was still getting gigs I was still writing songs and getting paid for them it was just like you know maybe I'm not international on that but it fostered in me a discipline and a drive and a focus as well creativity really gave me something to keep striving towards and to hone my craft and to get better in so many ways and to heal especially when things were kind of like falling apart around me and dealing with the stuff that happens in life just going forward it gave me something to go back to it was my solace it was you know whether I was singing a song or listening to something or just sitting and playing the piano at the end of a really hard day um, it, it just brought so much to me and I've seen also how music and art can heal others I just think it's uh, you know to to not have that in my life I, I would be a completely different person I love that. Yes. Uh, As a musician, uh, music is spirit and it connects Mm -hmm. me to spirit. I'm a drummer. And so rhythms, I hear body rhythms. You know, I've studied the cranial sacral system, which is a separate rhythm, Mm -hmm. separate from the heartbeat, separate from everything. So I've always connected to rhythms and I feel like rhythms really helped heal me so I love that yeah musicians so where in the world are you so at the moment I live in greater London so I'm just at the edge of London in in uh, Kent Bromley but for up until about a year or so I was living kind of more more central in the heart and, and soul of the city basically um so I really like I moved to London to be in London and near to where everything was happening um so that's where I'm based at the moment yeah So, darling, tell us about her conversations. Mm, Sure. So her, that acronym, Higher Energetic Resonance, actually came from... I love that. Love that. Love that. Yeah. And and that relates to my music, actually, as well. So um, I was shooting a music video. I haven't done that many, but (laughs) it was probably the one where I'd kind of put the most attention to. And um, the song itself came to me. It was like the probably the the only song that I can recall that I got up and literally wrote from start to finish you know it just it was a download you know when people talk about downloads that was absolutely it 
And the song was called Attraction. And everyone thinks it's always about like this romantic attraction, but it was my expression of understanding the law of attraction and be able, being able to draw things into your life, basically. So that's what that song was about. And um, when I shot the music video for it, um, you know, the, if you see the music video, I've got this kind of big dress and everything like that. And I wasn't that person at the time. I was going through a lot of stuff. It was like hard to like drag that together. Um, so when I saw the rushes of that, I saw this woman like H-E-R and it came to me that big um, higher energetic resonance and the shots of me beforehand getting makeup done and everything was like a little her. And um, I, I just played around with it. I didn't even launch the podcast until maybe like two or three years after that. And it was then, oh, what am I going to call it? And, you know, like you spend forever like scratching your head, you know, because it's going to it's going to mean so much to you. So, you know, a lot of the time people don't start because they just can't get the name right. So um, I use that and I use her conversations and it's um, hyphen tools for the awakening, basically. And it's about speaking to um, it's a higher percentage of women, but speaking to those who can speak to the awakening of humanity and the awakening in all many different ways. And I say we're speaking to spirituality, your sensuality and your soul so that my guests come on and speak to different areas of that wherever the listener is, whatever aspect of themselves that they want to develop into, whatever part of their 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 life that they feel that they're awakening hopefully one of the guests in the conversation will speak to an area that will just kind of inspire them to maybe even reach out to the guest and and collaborate with them love it so darling tell us your transformational story what got you on this path mm. Do you know what when I think about this there was never like one pivotal moment that, that there was like it wasn't like I had this kind of <laughs> you know awakening like I there was always um me having this awareness of the world being different than what was prescribed for me and like I said before because I was I was creative because I was writing because I knew that I could pull things from another realm um that I just kind of always had this I don't know slightly removed um uh, like existence in the world so always looking always questioning so um so there was so there's always been that and over the years I've just asked questions always been like why why is that happening how can that be more especially when I just you know I used to hear in my family they were always talking about they say we should do this and you know that they say you know and I'd be like who who is they who are these people that we never meet we never see that are running our lives so much so I was always intrigued that everyone was kind of following this um this path that no one really knew where it was going or who was directing it and so that was always my awareness so when things used to happen all the time in the world I was always like going well is is that the case you know and and a lot of when I was in my um, late teens, I did a media course and really worked out how um, magic can happen in the media. <laughs> Let's put it that way, you know, and, and from that point of view that the I media was... uses magic. I've yes. seen. Oh, yeah. 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 So so I was very much aware of how how situations can be manipulated and how easily you can steer people in. So there was always that element of me going but isn't there a possibility that it could be different you know where it, and it just always surprised me that so few people wanted to ask questions you know and sometimes would even get very frustrated that you dare have a question you don't just uh, absorb what what it is you get told and it never sat with me to just take something on and go along with it um, but over the, the years, then I've just had more awakenings and, you know, a few dark nights of the soul thrown in there for good measure, where I've had to really just like be still and deal with the situation in, in hand and, you know, separate and grow and and really reevaluate where I am at different points in time. So it's been a kind of just a constant evolution of myself, which is not over, by the way. Absolutely. Is it ever over? Right. I hope you not. Yeah, right. I, when it's over, it's over. <laughs> you talk about um, an exploration of many spiritual principles and practices and modalities. Tell us about your learning journey. Sure. Um, 
Well, I, I think it really began from, I was born into the church. So my father was a pastor. So I was like a PK, right? Front and center in the middle of the church, right? You, you don't get much higher and more involved in the church than being in the center of it. Um, and my father passed when I was very young. I was four years old. And then soon after that, my mom moved from the Pentecostal church into the Church of England church. And the Church of England is a very kind of more, um, if you've ever watched a royal wedding or anything like that, that's what Church of England's like. It's very still and staid. And imagine that I came from a Pentecostal church, which is gospel music and speaking in tongues and, and you know, just like everyone talking and screaming and, and standing up and just getting it out to this very staid version of uh worship and it was like what are these people doing you know they're saying similar things but yet I don't see there's any outward expression so again it started my questioning and invariably I got to my teens where that wasn't really enough for me and I wanted to find out more so I'd then just start to explore lots of different esoteric things I used to get a lot of books from the library and I remember them and, and just kind of look into all of the different kind of esoteric teachings. And then I'd go to meditation classes. I went into different yoga studies. I even went to Bali about five years ago and did a yoga teacher training, but also kind of like went into different self-development or lots of different people who have opened things up online that I see over the years that I kind of be part of their world for a year or so, buy a few courses learn something and then get to the point where I felt that I needed to move on. But what I've learned through moving through all of that, that there is a core that runs, there's a similarity through all of them. But of course, there's also the um, the stuff and the nonsense and, you know, the marketing and the, the fluff of the outside. But Distractions. There is a core. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But there are similarities that ultimately people who do gravitate towards those things are searching for something deeper so they they find what kind of tunes into them at that point in time yes I mean it's like um you talked before about being disconnected and kind of looking at and observing rather than being in it and I I see that as looking in the fish tank wishing you were in there but totally missing out where you're supposed to be Right. right. And so we're kind of looking and trying to be and comparing and those kind of things. And what you brought up was really important is to question, mm. question. And so I don't know if you can remember what were the types of questions that came up and answers that were brought to you? Mm. I think the first questions or the first the first kind, the first thing that I can think of where I was just like, I don't know if this is true, was, um, you know, it might sound morbid, but at my father's funeral, and I remember being four years old, standing over the coffin, and someone gave me a rose to drop down, and I just remember looking down, and just thinking, I don't think that's it, you know, just having this like, mm, I, I don't know, you know, but like, you know, obviously I couldn't articulate it, but I just didn't. I didn't feel that sense of sorrow and obviously there's a sadness and not having a physical father has its implications as you go through life but there was always a sense that I always felt that I was guided I always felt that I was protected some way that life would always steer me um but questions would always be like when people went one way I was just like I just want to know why they did that and then when they weren't able to give any kind of answer or if they hadn't even thought of it, I'd be like, but why would you want to live or do something without thinking about it or without questioning it? Or, uh, and, and especially when I'd meet people who didn't know what they wanted to do with their lives, you know, cause I always wanted to, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to do music. It was a no brainer, but I realized that I was very unusual because most people just didn't have a clue how they were going to spend their time really. So it was always about knowing that there was more because over the years I lost many friends and I just never felt that they were completely gone, but I didn't know what to do with that. You know, they, they were somewhere, but I couldn't, that was always my question. I'm like, I'm, I can't accept where, where everyone is going with this. And that didn't mean I didn't mourn them because, you know, I miss them physically and being able to communicate with them. But there was always a sense of like, I, I wasn't, I was never fully buying it. It never fully landed as a truth with me. I love that. Yeah, for sure. So how can our listeners find you? 
the best place is to come to my website. So my website is carolmaywittick.com, C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. And then that just kind of shows you all the things that I'm up to and all the things that are available to engage with me if that's what you choose to do. We'll leave Carol May's information in the description. I also see that you have a freebie for our listeners. Tell us about that. So that incorporates the her as well. So it's in, it's called embody her, embody higher energetic resonance, three steps closer to being the women, woman of your dreams. And it's a week long journey with me showing up in your inbox every day and some journal prompts. But it's very much about when you have an idea of something that you want to do, uh, when you're kind of standing in the present moment, looking at where you need to go, you sometimes think it's bigger and so unattainable for you to actually get there. But this is a, a, a journey of getting into the energy of that wish fulfilled of you being that person already so it's kind of getting you into that space of what does it feel like when you've you've made that first step what would that first step uh, person who's made that uh, who's achieved the goal that you want what would she say to you now to give you some advice to move forward and then even to go deeper into that and feel the energy of where you would be five years down the line or 10 years down the line when you've really created what you want to, when you've really made transformations and transformations in yourself, but also helping all of those other people. Because I think if we really think about the fact that the work that we want to do is never really just for us, it actually impacts everyone and everything around us. And if you can just get to that future point and just feel into all the people that you're going to be serving you're going to move past all the fears that you feel today. You're just, you're going to want to do it because you realize that you're creating an impact and the fear that you're feeling today is just because you don't know. So it's embodying your future self and getting that energy energy and that higher energetic resonance to infuse your present moment so you can move forward in confidence, knowing that you're going to be helping and serving a lot of people. I love that. So for our listeners who are listening, what would you tell them to or how to move past their fears what's what would you suggest to the listeners listening now mm. um one don't berate your fears you know having a fear having fears is natural so you know don't beat yourself up for being scared about moving forward like you're protected and your protective system always wants to keep you in the safe and the same space but also as well as i was kind of referring to the embody her is just thinking about moving to that space and who you can be like being afraid of moving forward is natural but also you're never given these dreams and these visions of what you can create if there wasn't a greater part of yourself yourself like reaching back and going you're going to be amazing by taking that step you're going to be so much more than you are today and 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 try and transmute that fear that you're feeling into the excitement and the curiosity of where you can go and who you can be. And the more that you can get into the curiosity of like, who can I be? What can I be? What can I create? Who can I meet? Then the fear is still there, but you just go, do you know what? Anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try and see where it takes me. So is that like um, fake it till you make it, or is there something deeper to it? Um. I, you know, fake it till you make it is a popular phrase, but I, you know, like, I'd say just feel it, feel it, be in it, you know, like, because it, it's not a fake thing. Like, the feel it till you be it. Yes. Feel it, feel it till you be it. it. Love yeah, it. Yeah, you know, because the, 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 it's, there's nothing fake about what we're envisioning. It's just another aspect of ourselves. It's our imagination is just a different realm that we exist in. And, and, it, there's nothing fake about that it's just you're bringing it through so just remember that you have this vision you know f- like feel into it see into it journal it you know speak to it, speak about it to people that you trust as well you know you have to be cautious of who you share your your fledgling dream, dreams to especially if you feel a bit anxious or or a little bit of trepidation about taking that first step but just just know that it's for you it's for your expansion it's a gift and that's why you're here Yes, it's the inner workings that stay inside. And as soon as we start telling people, it muddies up our her, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, For sure. yes, yes. It has been a pleasure chatting with you, Carol May. Is it Carol May or just Carol? Do you know, I don't mind as long as you spell it correctly. <laughs> I love Carol That's May. That's my only bagbear. 
Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you, Awakening Hearts, for listening. And please let me know in the comments what you loved and what you would love more of. And in the meantime, keep being amazing. Thank you.